All right, so if you turn to Second Timothy chapter three, um, so we're just going to read tonight just one passage out of Jeremiah that's um, been popping up in the last four days. So in three independent ways. So I thought I'd talk about it, and as you say, pick the bones out of it. Is that the saying? Actually, I was thinking before, the word of God's like a, a nice roasted chicken, isn't it? Have you ever noticed that when you just you just pick a chicken that it never ends? Like you go back to the chicken and there's always little pieces there to pick and find. I've never finished a chicken. No, no one else has had that experience. All right. I, I love a whole chicken. It's just yes. never ending. Okay, so 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And so um, just wanted to start off with that scripture because, you know, when you read the uh, Old Testament, sometimes you, you sort of, um, you might think, well, what's, what's this got to do with me? But um, very much so, you, you see the, the way that God worked in the Old Testament and his instructions are very much appropriate for us today as individuals, um, walking in the spirit and uh, seeing kind of where the children of Israel went, went wrong and what their attitude was can um, definitely lift us up. Um, and in, in the Amplified, it says in that verse, um, every scripture is God breathed, given by his inspiration and profitable for instruction, for reproof and conviction of sin, for correction of error and discipline in obedience, and for training in righteousness, in holy living, in conformity to God's will in thought, purpose, and action. Um, so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, well fitted and thoroughly equipped. So you know, it just covers everything, doesn't it, God's word? And, and as long as we have the attitude of that we're able to, that we want to receive all those things, which is um, becoming less so in the world, like um, no one wants to submit, no one wants any higher, higher authority, instruction, and all these kinds of things uh, is foreign to this. It's, it's not an attitude of this world. So we just need to... Uh, try and learn from the wisdom that's in the word and extract what we can from it. Um, so turn to Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, if you read the whole chapter, it's really um, it's really made up of three parts, which are quite very different. You know, one's a cry out to the Lord, one's um, kind of the, talking about the sin of of Israel, and, and and I was sort of reading up on just Jeremiah, and it's it's a very um, well unstructured is probably the wrong term, but there's a lot of different angles and pieces and and way of writing in it and i think it, uh, it's also not necessarily in chronological order so it's a pretty interesting book uh it's definitely not boring it's um very interesting read so um verse one the sin of judah is written with a pen of iron with the point of a diamond it is engraved on the tablet of their heart and on the horns of your altars and um i think john uh, john's on but yeah he was mentioning the the altar last Sunday, I think it was, and uh, I also had a talk on some of that tabernacle stuff, and um, and then I was looking into the picture of the altar and how on the corner it had the horns coming up uh, on that sort of rectangular altar. So the horns were very prominent <laughs> in uh, in the altars, and so when it says that their sin was uh, written on the horns of your altars, you know, if you go up to an altar, the horns are the thing that you see very first, even they're these big hook things that right in front of your face. And so 
he's talking here um, about sin being extremely visible and and damaging. Um, you know, the point of a diamond, it's engraved. It's a it's it's maybe uh, you know when you talk about engraving on your heart, you're talking about uh, in this case, you know, a really deep damage uh, that sin's doing, which is uh, quite the opposite of what we perhaps see even in, uh, forget the world, in Christianity, the religion today, uh, the standards are quite low such that people believe that sin is um, is something to be tolerated and um, just to be accepted um, with some twisting of scripture that, you know, we can live a sinful life and as long as we say some words or, or, or pledge some allegiance to God that, you know, that sin's just continually swept away and we can just continually do it, which we of course know is not what God's about. <clears throat> so anyway, the sin being uh, written on the heart, being on the horns of the altar is very prominent, not something that we know God wants to accept. Sin is not something that's just like background music as we go about our life that we just always accept, but it's, um, it's a damaging problem to people that want to actually follow God. Um, we'll skip over to verse four and you, even yourself shall let go of your heritage, which I gave you. And I will cause you to serve your enemies in the land which you do not know for you have kindled a fire in my anger which shall burn forever um <clears throat> so here we see uh a few things i guess when you think about how you live just anyone lives life in this world there are things that probably dictate your life most uh are where you live like the place you live and what and what you do. I was talking to some work people today in um, in uh, in Utah and places right now that they have the highest snowfall ever, and this guy's car is just like completely under snow. Can't see any of it. Just that's how it's going to be until the snow melts. And and I was just talking to him how their life is just completely different. They're even thinking about things that'll happen in three months, and they're like, "That's not going to happen," you know, because. Uh, because of the wet and snow and all this and they're planning lives. And I just thought, oh, it's so foreign to me to, to, to think of your life in that way um, so differently. And it's because where, where they live. And um, it says here, you know, that um, I will cause you to serve your enemies in the land which you do not know. And so imagine being thrust into another country, a place you is foreign to you, the society, the culture. It just feels different. It may feel uncomfortable. And then uh, serving your enemies. Um, and so these dominant things uh, in the lives of the children of Israel were, would, would be a huge thing to them. And it's not about um, that they should, you know, weighing the choices like, do we want this tough life in a foreign land or do we want to serve the Lord? Um, he's it's not a, it's not, it shouldn't be a choice for us to follow the Lord. Um, it's about being in harmony with our creator, the way he intended. Um, there's no choice there. Um, in reality, there, there is a choice. Of course, there's a, there's a one way to go or the other, but it's not a, well, let's weigh it up and see, uh, if, uh, it's worth the effort kind of thing. And if I can't be bothered, I'll, I'll just do what I want. Uh, it's not like that at all. Uh, God created us to have a relationship with him. Um, and it's a, it's a wonderful life and we wouldn't want it any other way. Um, the, 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 uh, the first part of that verse that where it says, and you, even yourself shall let go of your heritage, which I gave you, um, letting go of the, the promise, the inheritance which is a common theme in the Old Testament um, about, well, it's an overarching theme of the children of Israel, of course, where they were chosen and they were to have that promise of a special relationship with God and that they let it go. As it says here, um, uh, there was a separation between God and his people 
and um and it's actually a common theme in another way if you look at the major characters of the old testament how often it was the the second person or the the younger brother or you know the uh the character who was weak or you know wasn't or physically had some disability all these things that you see a recurring theme about the the weaker one or the person without the birthright being given it and it's it's a pattern there and it's a type of the children of israel losing that promise and also to us a warning to hold on to what we've been given and to not drop it drop the ball and and um to have us miss out um, god has given us a promise he wants us to uh to continue and, and finish that um so a common theme in christianity today is that you can't lose your salvation and yet you know two-thirds of the bible at least is written with the main theme that you can you can lose your salvation and and it documents how and yet uh you know the so-called christianity would have us believe that you know you say a couple of lines of a prayer and and our future is locked in no matter what happens verse five thus says the lord cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength whose heart departs from the lord in the amplified it's interesting it says cursed is the strong man who trusts in and relies on the frail man making weak flesh his arm um and so you know it's not a it's not an impressive thing to rely on yourself or to rely on your own plans and and your own strength because eventually there's going to come a time where it's going to fall apart and um you know mankind likes to trust himself and his plans and that we're going to make it all right um it's all going to work out in the end and um you know i you don't know, say that's not right just because we we don't like ourselves it's just it's just not a fact it's just not going to happen um so we want to trust in in that source outside of ourselves our creator the one who has the power um and you look at you know we i was thinking about children the other day just how um you have children and obviously they start off kind of innocent and then they're growing up older and older and then there's usually a certain point in time where you, you notice that they um it's just like a gray area of innocence now like <laughs> and it's, it's sometimes sad as a parent to see that it's 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 unavoidable because we're all going to become adults at some point and then we know everything and we know how um how uh disappointing the world is and all that and you know it all and it's just a little bit sad to see kids grow up and um discover that of course in the lord it's there's a there's a hope there um if they if they follow the lord um but just look at how our society raises kids and, and you know there's just a very fast decay of innocence um as they just become like everyone else like just become like the rest of us you know um and that's who we're trusting in in this world is like we're bringing up kids who start innocent and soon they've, they've got life's problems as well and so we got to rely on the lord um for our direction there verse six for he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited um you know the, the tragedy here the the second line there that they shall not see when good comes never mind is good coming or not you know looking out for the for the solution but good comes and they don't even see it it's not recognizable to them because their minds are so far from god um and so that's kind of like the definition of hopelessness is when you can't even see uh the solution coming to you verse 7 blessed is the man who trusts in the lord and whose hope is the lord 
for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes that its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought nor will cease from yielding fruit and i i really like these verses overall because they just like keep throwing in um different different angles and different pieces of hope it's not repeating itself here because like in these verses you see that he throws in um a little pivot to fear and anxiety solution so like the tree is so grounded and it's so um tapped into the source of life that when heat comes it it doesn't fear and uh and when a whole year of drought or many years of drought come there's no anxiety uh and so the solution here is is to dig into the things of the lord to um to avoid and minimize fear and anxiety, sinking your roots deep so that you're just tapped into the, the source of life. And um, it's like, you know, we control that. We control how close we get to the Lord. We control those dials of what we're doing in our daily life. We, we control all those things that get us closer, all the prayer, reading, singing Psalms, the, the meeting activities, the witnessing. It's like that proverbial dashboard with the controls like we can always dial it up if, it, if it's not happening for us and um i was also thinking how <clears throat> um <clears throat> sort of drawing closer to the lord um and that we control it. if you think of a large object like the sun um the sun isn't really probably impacted by the distance of the planets to it but the planets are very impacted by the distance to the sun, you know, the, the heat and the change of the chemistry and all that sort of stuff. Very much uh, the larger object is not really impacted by the small, but the smaller objects, it matters how, you know, the, the orbits and all that kind of thing and what happens on those planet. And so it is with us, you know, the Lord is that constant large thing in our life. And uh, all we have to do is move closer to him to, to reap the benefits. Um, and then uh, it says there, the last line there, nor will cease from yielding fruit. So um, being used by the Lord and having him work in your life um, should be our number one goal. And um, it's, it should be uh, something that gives us energy, that spurs us on when we see us being used by the Lord to carry out his will. That should give us energy, like um, probably a better word than energy, but you know what I mean. Um, and never think that, oh, you know, I'm nothing or I can't talk well. Um, I just said, I just said that in the wrong grammar. So like, you know, I, I'm, we're all pretty hopeless at something, I think. But, um, you know, I gave a talk once about imposter syndrome where you just, you just don't believe that you're actually worth anything or you believe that you're worthless and you believe that you uh um you just you're just a fraud when you're not of course um and it's actually seen in uh certain you know a lot of good people who are actually very good at things they have this mental thing where it's like i'm i'm useless and um we can't have that in the Lord. we can't think that because the lord how many times in his word does he say he he picked the weak or whatever to show, to work through, to show his strengths so that he would be glorified. And so if we turn that down, if we don't want to be used to the Lord because we think our flesh is weak, we're, we're denying what the Lord's <laughs> all about and what his plan is and because he picked us. Verse 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. As a partridge that broods but does not hatch, so is he who gets riches but not by right. It will leave him in the midst of his days and at his end he will be a fool. So again, we see this like another angle coming into this passage where it's just like you've got to stop and really figure out what it's saying here because the, the change in metaphors and all this is, is really happening. And, um, 
so it's a, an odd verse there talking about the bird who who uh you know comes in and is brooding and um sitting on someone else's eggs to to raise them and, and to take them as their own even though they didn't lay those eggs and uh what's this what's this all about i mean if you read the previous verse um where it's well the verse 9 and 10 talking about the heart is deceitful desperately wicked so we're talking here about self-deception and then it says i look i the lord search the heart i test the mind so so you start to get a picture of all right mankind's heart is wicked and deceives itself and says that it's something that it's not but the lord can see right through it he can see right through us as humans um just we're completely transparent to him whereas we think we can put up a facade and and be someone or be whoever we want to to be to anyone and the lord sees it and so if you think of that like you know being a fraud or um being deceiving yourself about who you are and then you read verse 11 you know you see um that it's like that bird cheating saying that uh these are my eggs i'm going to raise them i'm going to have a great family um but it says there that either the chicks will leave the mother or the mother will leave the the offspring essentially it's going to say eventually it's going to catch up with you and they'll depart they'll be like this doesn't smell like my mother or whatever birds do you know and there'll be that tragedy um so the point is <laughs> don't even start doing that right that partridge has that choice that that um down the road months or years is going to have a repercussion so don't even do it in the first place verse 12 a glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary O lord the hope of israel all who forsake you shall be ashamed those who depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the lord the fountain of living waters and we'll just finish up in john chapter 7 <laughs> Uh, it's just great when the, you know, um, any link to the Old Testament, New Testament, we know what this is talking about. John chapter 7 and verse 37. Now on the final and most important day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried in a loud voice, If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, uh, actually, I'm sorry, I'm reading out of the Amplified, but I'll just keep going. Um, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow springs and rivers of living water. But he was speaking here of the spirit whom those who believed in him were afterward to receive. For the Holy Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus were not, was not yet glorified or uh, raised to honor. Listening to those words, some of the multitude said, this is certainly and beyond doubt the prophet and others, of course, doubted him and so um you know with all these problems we've been reading about with the old testament um we don't have it nearly as bad as they did because we have the holy spirit and which does so much of the work for us and the work is the miracle the work is the the miracle is the changing of ourselves to uh to be able to use the spirit and live a life that is holy to the Lord, um, that's amazing. And they didn't have that. And so how much more do we have this great opportunity to, to be pleasing to the Lord and to, to walk in his ways, to receive the Holy Spirit? You can read about it in Acts chapter 2. Um, it says here that, you know, speaking here of the Spirit, even in the Gospels, you know, talking about this difference between when Jesus Christ walked the earth and when the Holy Spirit had come. And we, of course, challenge people to um, read all the verses and say why that doesn't mean what happens in Acts chapter 2. Uh, if it's not talking about the powerful experience of repentance, baptism in the water and the Spirit um, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, then what else was different? What was the, what was the difference? What was the outward sign that changed? Um, and you can read more about that in Acts chapter 8. 
Um, so anyway, just, yeah, in conclusion, you know, read these verses in, in Jeremiah about being honest with yourself, about um, fleeing anxiety and fear, knowing where the source of our hope is, and, um, and also being available, making yourself available to Lord to be used, you know, with that attitude of here am I, Lord, send me. So we'll just leave it there and we'll